In this exercise, we're going to buzz through the user action pseudo selectors of CSS, which include the active, hover, and focus action selectors. Okay, I'd like to direct your attention to the whiteboard. In our first example, we're going to take a look at the active pseudo selector. Now, where you set the active pseudo selector, you can target elements, class, ID, whatever you want to put there. And then for those elements, when their active state is initiated, that means when the user clicks on it to interact with it, these style properties are going to be applied to it in the active state. So let's take a look at that. So if I click down on this paragraph, look how big the text gets. It's crazy. This one, nothing happens because, so the second one doesn't have the active class. So nothing's going to happen when the user interacts with that. Now, since this is a user interactive selector, what we can do is let's put another copy here and then we'll put in the plus and P to dynamically target the very next paragraph. Or you could put the tilde P for general sibling selection. But I'm just going to put the plus to target only this one that's sitting next to it. And for that, I'm going to change the font to 7, really tiny. So what's, what this is saying is when class 1 element, this paragraph, is interacted with, or when it's in its active state, we're using the adjacent sibling selector to target the very next P and make property changes on that. So let's see what happens. We should get very big text when we click the first one and then the second paragraph text gets really tiny. So basically you can control the properties of one element by interacting with another. For our next example we're going to take a look at the hover pseudo selector. So what we have here is an unordered list with three list items within it. And in this rule we're just targeting what the list items are to look like in their normal state. Then here we're targeting what the list item should look like in their hover state by using the hover selector. So they look a certain way by default and then when the user's mouse hovers over them they get the changes specified within this CSS rule. Now once again using hover you can do the same sort of thing that we did with the active and the checked state where you can control other elements in the document when you hover over a certain li or a certain paragraph or a certain link and usually you see the hover pseudo selector used on anchor tags the a element just to make them change appearance when the user's mouse hovers over the little link but I just wanted to show it on different kind of elements because it's not exclusive to a elements you can use it wherever you like and the final user action pseudo selector in CSS is the focus selector. So these style properties will come into play whenever a particular element gains focus in the document. So let's see what happens. Let's give focus to this first field. You can see it turns a nice blue. Now when we're using this one, that one turns a nice blue. And that's because when they're gaining focus, in the document, they're getting this background color. And you can put any properties that you want there. Okay, using the focus event, we can get really user interactive by making other elements display whenever the focus is set on a particular element. So you can see we have an input with an ID of email, and then we have a span with an ID of email status. And then it says inside of that span, do not enter fake email address. Now this rule here makes that uh, status, the span, display none by default so it won't be showing. Now what we're doing here is when the email, the input with the ID of email, when that gains focus, we're saying any general sibling after that element with an ID of email status is going to get display in line. So we're saying email status gets to show and render when focus is set upon the email field. So let's see what that does. So when I go to type an email address, it's going to say do not enter fake email address because the span content is now showing. 
Now if I leave the email field and it loses focus, that message goes away. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, and that does it for all of the user action pseudo class selectors of CSS.